Well, thank you for being here today. Um, to my wife, Susan, our two sons that are here, our daughter, um, and our entire family, uh, it was your love and encouragement and support are the sole reasons that I can stand here today. From the bottom of my heart, thank you and I love you. I'm proud to be sworn in today alongside Montana's new Lieutenant Governor, Kristen Juris. Uh, she's become, uh, she's been more than my running mate. Uh, I consider her a friend and she'll be my ally here in the governor's office. And I'm proud to serve with you, Kristen. To Governor Bullock, I want to thank you for your cooperation during this transition uh, and for your years of service to our state. Uh, Judge Nisley, uh, thank you for traveling here today and uh, administering the oath. Uh, since 2010, uh, you have built a successful treatment court uh, that helps people suffering with drug and alcohol uh, addictions uh, rebuild their lives and become productive members of our communities. Uh, we look forward to building on your work in Yellowstone County to ensure those suffering with addiction throughout the state get the kind of treatment they need uh, to return to health. Senator Hertz, uh, Senator-elect Hertz, um, thank you for leading this ceremony and for your years of service in the House as Speaker and other roles. The Senate is better off with you in it, so thank you. I want to thank Justice Rice. Uh, and Pastor Hughes for being here. Thank you for being part of the ceremony. And most importantly, I want to thank you that are at home uh, in every corner of our state. Uh, you came out and turned out in record numbers during this recent election. Uh, I've been humbled by the outpouring of support I've received from Montanans of all political stripes. Montanans who are united by the idea that we can work together to realize Montana's full and outstanding potential. With you at the front of my mind and with a servant's heart, I will work towards creating better opportunities for all Montanans. I take the oath of office today, prepared to assume the duties you have entrusted me with, with humility and a deep sense of duty. I take the oath of office today prepared to lead Montana's comeback with strong mandate you provided to us with the largest margin for a first term governor in over a hundred years. I take the oath of office today with family in our great capital and with Montanans throughout our great state. With the grave challenges of the last year, Montanans have had to make sacrifices and do things differently. You've had to change how you celebrate holidays, scale down wedding ceremonies, and postponed many of your long uh, awaited plans. This inauguration ceremony is no different. Uh, there are no large crowds in the Capitol. There are no celebrations. It's important to me to do what you have had to do to do things differently than we've done them before. The grave challenges of the past year, the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic consequences that have resulted have left no Montanan untouched. And let's not forget about the thousand, nearly a thousand people that have fall victim to this virus that are no longer with us. And yet, throughout the grave challenges of the last year, we've seen new heroes emerge. Healthcare workers on the front line who care for patients have had to quarantine from their families and separate to put their patients first. First responders who have encountered more cries for help from greater drug use to increase domestic violence to a rise in child abuse, all as a result of pandemic induced isolation. Parents who have had to balance working their jobs to pay the mortgage and put food on the table with taking care of their children who have been at home because schools and daycare centers have had to shut down. Educators who have had to entirely change how they work with students, moving from in front of a classroom to in front of a computer screen. Truckers who have kept our supply chains moving grocery store clerks who have kept 
our shelves full. The list goes on. But what the last year has shown all of us Montanans is that we step up in a time of crisis. Neighbors help neighbors in Montana. And this is, and it is that resiliency that gives me hope and optimism. I am confident that with vaccines and increased testing, we will get a better handle on our response to COVID-19. I am confident that our economy will rebound. I am confident Mont Montanans will get back to work in good paying jobs. I am confident that we will recover. I am confident that Montanans will make our comeback. Today's inauguration sets a new course for Montana. Today marks a new chapter in our history. Today marks a new beginning for Montanans throughout our state because the possibilities are vast and our potential is as boundless as our skies. I'm honored and humbled to stand before you here as the 25th governor of the great state of Montana. I remain dedicated today, just as I was throughout the campaign, to lead Montana's comeback. Growing opportunities here in Montana, bringing the American dream within greater reach for more folks, and promoting greater prosperity in every corner of our state. I want you to know that everything we do will be guided by a core set of principles. The first principle, economic growth and more good paying jobs. Montana has outstanding potential, but we haven't been living up to it. It's one reason our kids and grandkids have become our biggest and ultimately our dearest export. We have a strong workforce thanks to our education system, from our public schools, to our trades education, to our university system. We must continue to empower our students and workers with accessible, affordable skills and education. We have two key elements that are the envy of every other state in the country. One, Montanans have an unparalleled work ethic. And two, we enjoy an outstanding quality of life, particularly in our public lands and access to outdoor recreation and adventure. Our environment for small businesses, however, must improve. I am committed to making Montana more competitive by lowering taxes, cutting unnecessary red tape, and improving our infrastructure. Today, let me say loudly and clearly to job creators, entrepreneurs, and business owners in our state and beyond, Montana is open for business. The second core principle is fiscal responsibility. For too long, state spending has grown out of control as taxpayers send more money to Helena, the appetite has been insatiable. We must provide essential services while living within our means and providing much needed tax relief to hardworking Montanans. We must be better stewards of taxpayer money. We must run our state government more efficiently. The third core principle, reform. We must change how state government does business. We must make it more responsive and emphasize providing a better customer service experience to our citizens. We must get state government working for Montanans again so that we can get our economy going, get Montana open for business, and get Montanans back to work in good paying jobs. The fourth principle, protecting our way of life. We must protect our communities and families, particularly from crime and the epidemic of drug addiction that has touched too many Montana families. We must protect our public lands, conserving them and increasing access to them. We must protect the rights enshrined in our Constitution. Ultimately, we do these things to protect our way of life for the next generations of Montanans. These core principles will guide me in my service to you. 
Looking forward, I passionately believe more unites us than separates us as Montanans. This is particularly true here. History bears it out. That's why I'm ready to work with anyone, Democrat, Republican, or Democrat, or Independent, that has a good idea. Because I see Montana's, Montana's outstanding potential. I see it in the hardened hands and warm hearts of hardworking Montanans. I see it in the smiles and hopefulness of our kids. I see it in the charity and goodwill of our neighbors. And I see it in the splendor of our landscapes. Folks, we have an opportunity to realize our full potential here in Montana. We must seize this opportunity and act. To do so will require leadership. But no one can lead all by themselves. I, re I will require your help. Ladies and gentlemen, let's work together to help Montana realize our full and outstanding potential. Because together, we can make Montana better. And together, we will. Today, as we reflect on the last year and we begin this endeavor, this new chapter for Montana, we seek guidance. Our founders understood the importance of seeking providence. In 1789, Congress requested that George Washington, and I quote, recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them the opportunity to peaceably establish a form of government for their safety and happiness, end quote. That October, the same year, in his first year as our president of this fledgling nation, President Washington established Thanksgiving. In doing so, he wrote, and I quote again, it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and humbly to implore his protection and favor." End quote. Today, I hold President Washington's wise words closely. I hope you'll join me in keeping our state and our country in our prayers. Thank you. God bless you, and God bless this great state of Montana.